Yeah, yeah kind of. All right. Um, last week we were talking about um, the video tag in HTML5. And what I'd like to do is kind of rewind a bit to kind of set the stage of how things were and how things um, are now with HTML5. All right. I don't think it's always important to like give history lessons of how it is, especially if you're focusing on like the newer technology. Uh, but I think it's a, in, in, insightful in this case. There was no standard way of doing video in HTML before. All right. By standard, I mean um, I'm speaking very strictly. In other words, the W3C's standard as far as HTML. There was the ability to embed objects on your page that could be played with a plugin. All right. So. In the old days, whether they be audio files or video files or whatever, what you would do is you would have, have to download a plugin, which is another piece of software, and then the HTML code would have an object embedded within it that would have some parameters. And depending on the specifics of the kind of video it was or kind of audio or animation, blah, 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 the parameters of how you configure it would be different. Now, what's wrong with that picture? Well, what's wrong with that picture is, number one, it sort of requires an extra thing for the person to have. That is, it requires... A, Does the user? Yes. The person, the user, downloading, the the person downloading it needs a plug-in. So, for example, to watch any Flash video, you need the Flash plug-in. Well, what's wrong with that? Well, that's an extra thing. It's an extra thing that can go wrong, all right? It's an extra thing that could be the wrong version, or could have bugs of its own, or not play well with the browser. It's just an extra thing, all right? And that causes problems. So the ideal was if video, uh, if browsers could just play the video themselves, then everything would be okay, as opposed to flashes. Now, who is probably the most notable or most famous critic of Flash? From Apple, specifically Steve Jobs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Steve Jobs was like, no flash on the iPhone, no flash on the iPad. Why? Well, he blamed flash for a lot of like performance problems and crashes and all that. Like most of the time when uh, like the Safari browser and Mac crashes, it's because of flash. In addition, uh, performance issues with it, the memory that it uses, a lot of problems that they identify relating to, pla to flash. All right? And again, relating to the fact that there is an extra plugin required to play that. All right? So the idea of HTML5 was the browser is going to know how to play videos itself. All right? So that code would be built into the browser. Except it really isn't, at least not that. Well, except for the fact that what I believe went wrong with us is I have old browsers on here. That's the only thing I could figure. Um, and um, what else? Um, older browsers on here. The other thing is um, different browsers then can support different videos. Now, that's where we get into the thing of having multiple video files where you can specify and then if a, one browser handles one and so on down the line. Now, the one thing we're going to look at towards the end of, uh, at, uh, or not towards the end of, but, but in a few minutes here, is sort of having a fallback. What if I run into someone with an old browser? All right, what can I do? So let's look and let's see if we can get this working. Or if I have to download Chrome to do this. I think Chrome's the only one that does MP4. Well, this wasn't an MP4. I converted it to another one. I have problems with Chrome on mine. Of course, I had an older version of Chrome as well. So far in 5, there are only three formats, three video format, formats supported. And right. See if this guy does it. Nope. And Flash is a one of them. Right. I thought that was kind of odd because I thought Flash was the most widely used. Uh, 
It is, but what does Flash need? Needs a plugin. Needs a plugin, and it's not it's not a quote standard. It's a proprietary thing, and for those reasons, again, the whole goal of HTML5. That's why when you asked about that last time, once I got in and did some research, it's like, oh yeah, of course it's not going to play that. All right. Let me download Chrome so that I hope we can view this correctly. Because what I did is I actually um, converted it to an OGG file. OGG. Using the online converter. Yeah. So let me download Chrome. While we're doing that, we can take a look at the code that um, I think is part of the way done, but not complete. Yeah, I know. I'm gonna. I was. I was just about to go close the door. Yeah, I. Th I think partly is the way the, the halls and the doors are arranged. I know a lot of times, like if there's people outside the door talking, it sounds sounds really loud. Copy the code. For HTML5 video. Again, here's the three formats you had mentioned support the WM or WP4, the OGG, and the WebM. What's, what's WebM? We can look up that in a second. I'm not really familiar with that. Um, let's see. Makes sense. And still there is an issue. Let me go and I'm going to go and get my laptop real quick because I know this works on my laptop. At the bottom of that should be supporting this. Let me go. I was, oh, we, we'll look at that in a second. Let me go grab my laptop because I know it works on there. Because 
We looked up WebM, and it looks like kind of like just some HTML5 specific video format. Yeah, I have never heard of that one before. This, so. That's what, I, that's what I was wondering. All right, here we go. I am both on both on Firefox and Chrome. I have the video playing. Alright, this is a Chrome browser, and here we go with the video. Interact with anything except the test plants. The the this class. is the OG, OGV, actually, but yeah. yeah. A couple of and Firefox. Try opening it in Safari. That's the other browser I have in here. Is that Mac 
on air too. Interesting. Interact with anything except the test class. I think I have one more browser on here. Stainless, I think that's a browser. I'll be curious to see. Probably, yeah. I'll be curious to see if this is there a version of Safari that will run on Windows? No. There may have been at one point, there, but I don't think so yeah, anymore. I have one on my laptop. Oh, really? Yeah. Correct. Pretty sure. Okay. I stand corrected. Well, maybe a year ago, correct. Okay. Because <laughs> I know there was a version of IE that ran on Mac, and then there was a version of Safari that ran on Windows, but I thought they kind of uh, went by the wayside. 517 for Windows. Here's that browser, and let's see. Sure looks like it's going to play. Now, if we can... With anything except the test class. Now, if we can look at this... Again, I have the video tag with the parameters, and I have three files listed. I don't have that file, so I can get rid of that. Let's go and get rid of MP4, and let's see what happens. I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. On your uh, movie.ob, uh, or OGV, mm -hmm. on the right there, you can under type, it says OGG. Right. I was just curious why it didn't say OGV. Well, because that's the MIME type, and the MIME type isn't necessarily the exact same thing as the, as the extension. Okay. I'm not real familiar with OGG files. It may be that some can be named OGG and some can be named OGV, okay. um, but the particular converter I had converted it and gave it an OGV extension, so I didn't tempt fate. <laughs> and I'll get rid of this one because I don't have it. So... That broke stainless, getting rid of the MP4. It did not break Chrome, which must use the OGV file. Interact with anything except the test. And it file. sort of looks like it's, it broke Safari. The automobile class. I am surprised. Surprised it doesn't give me that that Out error message on the bottom though. There is an instance variable for the tank size. Now, one nice thing that we won't get into in this class. But oops. any of you that have done any, oh shoot, this is plugged in. Anyone that's done any coding um, in other environments, in other web environments, knows that you can write JavaScript to do stuff on your page. That is, you can write JavaScript to make things visible, make them invisible. You can manipulate the properties. And, and actions of a particular object on the screen through your JavaScript. You can actually do that within your HTML code now in JavaScript under HTML5 because now the browser knows about the video tag. There was no video tag before, so the browser didn't obviously know about the video tag, and the browser didn't really have any access to the innards of that object. So while well, you could display a video and play it, um, you actually couldn't manipulate uh, um, the stuff through, through JavaScript. And I'm talking about things like doing an image swap, you know. Just like in theory you can do an image swap, or just like you can do an image swap, although I've never tried it, in theory you should be able to swap the movie that was in a particular video frame, I would think. 
So you wouldn't have to have 10 movie players on a page. You could have one player, and as you press that, you could pro programmatically switch it. I believe you could do that. Like I said, I've never tried that, but, but that's sort of the implication of that. Now, my troubles here <laughs> with this, you know, um, what's the lesson that we can take from this? Well, the lesson we can take from this is that you never know what the client's going to have. All right? So, for example, you know, had I just had the one version of the video, then it wouldn't have worked in all the browsers. Let's go and look at that chart that you mentioned that, that says what's available on what. hardly avoid uh, having it, that, that you can almost not get rid of it. All right, let's see. Yeah, IE was was because um, we I know we have IE eight on here, so I knew that there was no way, or I should have known that there was no way that it would work. All right, here's the formats that they support: Chrome support supports MP4 and WebM, Firefox WebM, Internet Explorer MP4, provided you have IE nine. Safari, MP4, Opera, and all that. What's iOS? iOS is like the uh, the um, the yeah iPhones oh, and and okay. yeah iPhones and iPads and all that. Now, again, this this leaves us in in a quandary, you know, in a dilemma. Like, what do we do, you know? Um, with this. Because obviously, if we picked any one format, it's not going to work. And worse than that, there's going to be some browsers that it's not going to work at all. All right? Because earlier browsers, it doesn't work. All right? You know, no matter what we try, no matter what file format we have, IE8 isn't going to play HTML5 video. IE9 will play it if it's MP4, and this browser will play it for that, and this browser will play it for that. But the point is, and again, this might not necessarily be current information, but the point is, is like, what do you do then as a developer? Well, you try, you have things in a couple different formats, but the other thing that you can do is you can put in what's called a fallback. In other words, sort of a none of the above feature. And that's what I like to look at. Now, briefly, you don't need to worry about this for uh, your assignment. If you want to worry about that, you can, but you don't necessarily have to. Um, HTML5 video with a fallback to Flash. And let's see. Essentially, they take advantage of that sort of none of the above code. If you remember last time, 
I put something up there that said there was just a message that said no, none supported. What they do in this case is you can put your HTML5 uh, video tag in there. You can put your two choices. Again, this one hits Firefox. This one hits Safari and Chrome. But sort of the last one is the none of the above one is if none of the other ones work, you can embed a flash video. Now does that mean you have to have uploaded that file to Blip TV? Well, in this case, yeah, but you, you not not necessarily universally. In other words, if you had that file locally on your server, you could put the, the URL to that as well. As long as it's in the same file. Yeah, it should be in the same folder, yeah. Full. Yeah, even if it was in a different folder, you could refer to it, but... A lot of times that's what people will do is they'll put it up on us. So that's probably why that example shows that. So you get this a lot in web development. You know, developing in the web is, is a less than uh, perfect environment to develop in simply because a lot of things are changing at the same time. The specifications being developed at the same time people are developing browsers. Therefore, any browser may have incomplete support of a particular technology or not, or no support at all. Plus, you have all the folks with the older versions of stuff that may not do any of this business whatsoever. All right. Therefore, what you try to do is try to give sort of a good web designer will try to build in sort of a fallback plan. Um, in our mobile web development class that I talk about, we, we do things like that. Like you can put code in that if they're on a real ancient browser that doesn't really have much capabilities, at least the code is viewable. At least they can see the web page, see the content, and interact with it. If, however, we know something about the machine and the device, we can maybe do better than that and give them an improved experience. So, again, that's kind of a principle and kind of just the way it is that um, you have no control over the environment that the client is going to be viewing your stuff in. And, therefore, you want to try to make it as flexible as possible. Um, so you sort of plan for it, but then you also test. Know, you test in as many different browsers and environments as as you can. You know. Other than I'm sorry, other than videos, um, do you, like things like when you have to upload files, do they have a fallback? I always see on certain things like when I have to upload homework that if this player does not work, click here for like an older version. Yeah. So that that's essentially a fallback. Okay. In other words, what it's saying is if for whatever reason your technology, your solution doesn't support it, it's like. Here, here's a bare bones way that we know will work. Yeah. Okay. You know, and I, I'll get that like up, depending on what machine I'm on, uploading my videos to YouTube. You know, on nice on some machines I have a nice drag and drop. I can drag the thumb, some ones over. If not, I can click on the button, browse for them. Click, you know, so yeah, a lot of places provide that. And again, that's really one of the challenges of web development is trying to give a good experience, um, not necessarily a uniform experience, right? Because you can't. How do I want to say? If, if someone's technology doesn't support it, there's some things that you simply can't duplicate, but at least you can give them a substitute for it. All right, and and that's a good example of a fallback. This is another good example of a fallback. And what's yeah. Aug, what's Aug again? I Aug is a video format. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's, it's, it would be like an MP4 or a WMV. Is like an open source format. I believe so. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't I don't know what the OGG stands for. Um, by the way, this stuff that we're talking about, we didn't cover it in that unit, but also applies for audio as well. In other words, HTML5 has the same sort of thing, except instead of for audio, it has... Um, I'm sorry, instead of uh, for video, it has audio, where you can specify that you want an audio and that you have a couple different sources for it, and then you can have a, a, play, uh, a fallback for it to embed the object just as you would have in the, uh, in, uh, you know, for older browsers. This brings us to the need in, the, in what we talked about one time, 